Now, there's been a recent uptick in interest in the unified dream wall with uh, Ubiquity obviously offering it for sale on Black Friday for a reasonable price. And obviously, a lot more people have bought them. So there's questions coming in on basically how people are finding them. So I thought, why not update everybody as I've had this one now running for quite some time as you can see this having the small screen is an EA model and I've had this since this was in early access. Um, I can give you some real world takes on the dream wall, how it's functioning, how it's behaved, um, whether my views on it have changed at all, what's improved, what needs improvement and hopefully what will be coming maybe in the future if Ubiquity decide to listen to us. Now, for those of you who are unaware of what the Dream Wall is, this is the Ubiquity Dream Wall. This is the different version of Ubiquity's idea for places without space to put a rack. If you go and watch one of their latest uh, marketing adverts, you will see them having a poke of bit of fun at the uh, established way of doing things with a rack and uh, showing that actually, no, you don't need to have a rack and you don't need to have all the space associated with a rack to have this feature set. You can have a dream wall. Obviously, as I said earlier, this is an EA dream wall. Uh, the general available dream wall has a bigger screen on the front and a few cosmetic changes, but nothing in terms of actual hardware and capability. So let me just quickly go through and I will pop the front off and show you the insides quickly. So now with the front off, just a quick one, we have got a pair of power supplies down the bottom in the dream wall uh, in a basically redundant power supply. We'll get back to that later. We've got the power in, we have got a 10 gig WAM port, a two and a half gig WAM port and an additional LAN port. We've got an SD card slot for the protect memory card. Obviously we've got the touchscreen on the front there. Uh, we have the core and then at the top we have the bit that causes the most consternation. We have got a 16 port PoE++ switch. So we have got four ports of PoE++, four ports of PoE+, four ports of PoE and four non-PoE ports and we have a 10 gig SFP++ port on the end for fiber. So what this gives you is the basic overview of a network in a box. It has a built-in Wi-Fi 6 access point also. So this can run an entire Unify network. It is effectively a cloud, no, a Dream Machine SE, but without the hard disk in it. Now to start with down the bottom here with the two power supplies, this is listed by Ubiquiti as a redundant power supply system. And it kind of is, but mostly it isn't. The problem you have here, and this is something that was queried with Ubiquiti, and they don't really want to answer it, but it's up to them, is that they are both fed off of one power source. So your power goes in here and it is running two power supplies, which is great if one of these fails, but in the real world experience, it's actually quite rare for a power supply to actually fail. Um, this being a early access model comes with both power supplies. The generally available model actually only comes with one power supply when you buy it new. And currently, as it is today, we are at the end of November 2023, you cannot buy the second power supply standalone. Now, these power supplies, if I just pop one of these out, Again, doesn't actually do a huge amount. Just gonna slide this out, just caught cable. So just in case you do want to see them, these are a 550 watt power supply from Ubiquiti um, with a little fan in them and they slot in the little hole in the side there. Now, one of the interesting things is when you pull a power supply out of this, you get no notification, and I have raised this with Ubiquiti on the forums and didn't really hear much back from it. But basically, if a power supply fails, you probably won't know about it anyway until something goes wrong. Um, but there is no alert. You have to look on the console and it will tell you, oh, there's one of the power supplies unplugged. When it's plugged in, the only thing it does is it uses a little bit more power and generates a bit more noise and heat. 
it doesn't get you anything. It's one of those ideas that Ubiquity, hopefully in the next iteration of this or the pro iteration, they come up with uh, getting rid of this option and maybe give us a hard disk bay or something to put an actual hard disk in. So with that, again, we'll move on over to this side with the SD card slot for Protect. Now, one of the limitations of the Dreamwall is the amount of cameras it can take. It can take six 2K cameras, and that's it. Um, cut that down to probably three 4K cameras and a few more on the old HD cameras. But you can, at the moment, the biggest SD card you can get is a terabyte, and you're not going to be able to squeeze much in terms of camera footage on those if you're recording continuously. But uh, if you buy this from Ubiquity now, you get a 512 gigabyte card. You can upgrade it to a terabyte card. But this was a bit of a letdown. There is enough space in this chassis to have included a two and a half inch base slot somewhere and kept those. What we would have preferred is if we'd lost a power supply and gained a hard disk bay. So Ubiquity, if you're listening, when you build us out the uh, Dreamwall Pro, we want some hard disk bays, please. Or if you do a Dream Wall SE, hard disk bays, please. This is pointless. This is not needed because it comes in through one power supply. So if you lose power here, these do nothing. Just because it's enterprise to have dual power supplies, this isn't needed. Um, we've got obviously the core, as they call it here, which has got the access point behind it. And obviously... Uh, at the top, we've got the switch. The switch is nice to have. Now, one of the things that people were always querying on, and there's also a lot of complaints, so to speak, about this, is what do you do with these cables? Well, there's plenty of options to, to, to deal with cables like this. Um, one of the easiest options is actually you have it going into a brush panel behind. This is sat on the wall here because unfortunately I needed somewhere to put it at the time, and here is where it stayed. Um, with excuse the mess, but cables going up to there in a typical IT guy, temporary permanent solution. Um, but the actual cable stays in the mess. Very little dirt gets in here. Very little problems with them. Cables just sit neatly clipped in out the way. And yes, you can put a nice little panel behind there. Or if you've got this in a cab a cupboard or a cabinet somewhere, you can tuck it out the way. Um, it keeps it neat and tidy, but it also means that if you do have this front and center somewhere, it doesn't look messy if you have these just tidied up, even into a little bit of trunking or something just to hide them out of the way. Um, for some strange reason, we do have a LAN port under here. I don't know if that was supposed to be for something later on, maybe. So it's actually a 17 port switch with an SF, well, it's an 18 port with the SFB port. Um, the WAM port's under here. On the generally available model, there's a panel behind there that you can pop out and run the power and everything out the back. But quite happy it comes out down the bottom on this. I don't have a problem with that. doesn't really worry me. Um, people have asked maybe consider putting a panel in behind here. Someone did ask if you could drill that. Uh, I advise against it. I wouldn't recommend drilling through the back of that. But... Maybe in a later model, we will have the option to have this is a removable unit, maybe would be a suggestion, but that's where it is at the moment. Let me just whiz the cover back on. Now with the cover on, you'll see it doesn't actually look that bad. Um, the idea behind this is to be a device that is used instead of a rack. If I had to put a rack in here, or I had to put a rack say up there, it would still be stuck out 500 mils from the wall it would be using a lot of space this is designed for an environment where space is a premium and it works it does the job and it fits in for that use case really really well this has been in and running now since probably two months after it came out and it hasn't missed a beat it has been running with me for doing testing. I've put all sorts of weird and wonderful things through this. This runs my entire home network and it has been pretty much faultless. So again, as a product, 
it's a really good idea if you do not have much in the way of space. It does not take up much more depth than, for example, putting a Dream Machine SE on a rack mount hung. Um, it gives you the option, especially with the uh, PoE++ switch, that if you want to, you can run other switches off this. So you can run flex utilities, should you require it, and flex uh, switches around the house and outdoors, which is what I do with this. I have a flex utility box running off of it. I have uh, another switch elsewhere in another rack that is used for other things. But this is the core of the network. This does the processing and it doesn't get in the way. People generally just ignore it. Uh, so it's not a bad product at all. Um, now, hopefully, Ubiquiti, if you're listening to this, in the next version of this, when you do one, because we know you will, hopefully we'll get the U6 Pro, which was in all the videos that vanished. Or if you do a Dreamwall SE, we get a version that's got storage for a hard disk. We get a version that has got um, maybe consider putting a, a the ability to hide the network points out the back at the top or maybe even consider move the WAN up to the top as well. The Dreamwall Pro that was pictured had four SFP Plus sockets on the top. So we'll see what happens with that eventually if it does get released or if they decide to change tact and go for a different way with it. But this is the Dreamwall, and this four-factor device raised a lot of concern when it was first announced and launched. Um, with a lot of people concerned because it's different. Um, it moves away from the must have a rack and everything rack mounted, which raises concerns and scares a few people, unfortunately. This form factor, I believe, has got quite a good future. So long as Ubiquiti listen and improve what they've already done. If we get a new version of this, eventually, with a hard disk, that will sell more. If we get a version of this without the unneededness of a second power supply in this, that's just not needed. It, there are certain things that unfortunately just didn't make any sense. But overall, if you are looking at a dream wall as an option because it fits, because you're happy to have, again, you only need maybe 16 port network ports. You might need more network ports, but what you can do is obviously you can run smaller switches, the light switches and that, which was what this was designed to do, was to have switches run off of the main switch here. And that enables you to keep a very, very low profile, very small footprint IT install in a home, in small business, that sort of thing. So the dream wall it's still a good product even six months down the line um hopefully in six months time we may see a revision of it if we're lucky we'll wait and see what uh, ubiquity have to do but until then if this fits your use case if you need something that is low profile if you don't need to install a rack consider it